Yeah. Now, did you get anything out of that place? Well, I, I talked to you a little bit about it a while back, but yeah, we had some experiences. But I think I think the most conflicting thing was all the stories we were told with the by the complainant because you know you can't just take their word as you know as as gospel mm -hmm. either. If we can't you know confirm that there was a murder there be with a police report, with right, right, something right. from the medical examiner, or something, then there wasn't. And of course, every building we go into, you know. Al Capone used to own this, right. and Al Capone did this, and there were tunnels, and we were told that everywhere we go. Right. But about that building, we were told it was a brothel, it was a gambling right. den, it was a this, it was a, according to who? You know what right, I mean? Right, right, right. So, so where did the story start? Right, and we have to separate folklore and legend from what's real, what can be proven, what is documented. And if it's not documented, we can't confirm that ever took place. That case is a perfect example. Stag's Head is a perfect example. If, if you saw the episode, you saw what we were working with at the beginning of the episode, the stories that we were being told. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the ultimate story that came out, the true fact of everything that came out was almost 180 degree difference from what they had initially told us in the story. Yeah. And, the, and these folklore stories that have the Al Capone been, thing. Yeah, yeah, that have been passed going on to the for the cemetery, to the right. woods, to under the street. And, and it's exactly how a, a real crime is investigated is, is that you go in, sometimes you receive information from, let's say you get a witness and you saw this and you saw that and you give me all this information. It doesn't mean that you're telling me the truth. Right. Maybe you know the, maybe you know the offender and you're giving me information to mislead my investigation. That's why you're going to because me. You're, you're doing it as cops. Obviously, with right, that sure. total cop twist. I mean, it could be anything at work when we're at work. You know, there's a shooting, and we're looking for a purple blazer, which turns out to be a red Ford Explorer. Right. And it's not even that people intentionally throw oh, us of off, but That's it, what they it, think it's they their saw, perception whatever. in the moment. And, it, you know, it's like somebody that walks out of their house in the morning to go to work and their car's gone. To them, their car was just stolen. In actuality, their car was stolen at an unknown time between 8 o'clock last night and this morning. Right. But because it happened to them, it just happened. Right. Which is completely inaccurate. So we're used to dealing with that because you have to put yourself in their mind frame. Right. You know what I mean? And it's the same with this. Their, their investigation is just like at work. Now, I've got to tell you my little story with, with what do you call that, Stag's Head? Yeah, that's what oh. it is now, yeah. All right. I got, I, my mind is Rico D's because I spent every weekend there for a month. And when I'm shooting... I, I don't have the, I don't, I'm not sensitive. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't feel anything. You know, I've experienced a lot of stuff, but I don't, when I go into a place like that, it could be light out and I don't, I don't, ooh, I'm freaking out, right? So the psychic that I worked with that was phenomenal mm -hmm. ended up buying that place. He owned it okay. at one time, right before the stag had went from, went from uh, Rico D's, mm -hmm. Don Cress mm -hmm. owned it. You know Don Cress? No, not okay. at all. Don Cress owned it. Sold it to my buddy, mm -hmm. my psychic guy. Mm -hmm. He ran in the ground, and then they, the other place took it over. But I always told him, I says, my job is going to be, I'm going to work in a, in, a, in a tiki bar in the Gulf of Mexico. That's my retirement. You know, you talk, everybody's happy because they're drunk and, right. you know, chicks all over the place. I mean, what, what better, you know. So he goes, Chuck, you want to be a bartender? Bartend here mm -hmm. on Thursday nights. I go, I'll bartend here on Thursday nights. It'll be fun. Just give me tips. I don't care if I make money. It'll be just fun for me trying to do this. Right. He says, and if people want a tour of the place, charge them. Mm -hmm. But don't, you know, don't say 50 bucks or 20 bucks. Just say it's a donation, and it goes in your pocket. So these Latinos come, and Latinos hate this stuff. One kid who's about 16, he's taking pictures, and he's trying to compose, trying to find stupid orbs and stuff, which I don't like orbs. But I go, don't compose. Just take the, it's a digital. So, you know, so just shoot. Mm -hmm. Shoot all over the place, and then look at it later. All right? So we're in the beer garden in the back by the hill. And he goes, yeah, Mr. Parker, come here, look at this. He taps me. He goes, look. Now he's shooting up where the beer signs were up there in the windows. And the curtains are like this. The muttons are like this. He pictures like one, two, three. Nobody's there. Mm -hmm. It was us. And, no, and we're all outside. The place was closed. Right? And you've seen the curtains here, here. Whoop. Hmm. And I go, wow, that's pretty freaking cool. Right? So there was this black guy that was there with dreads and stuff. He had just started working there. And I go, you got to go up in that room. He goes, I ain't going up in that room. I go, hey, look, I'm kind of your boss, I think. He goes, you just started. I go, I know, but I know the owner, so I'm your boss. I t I'm, I'm up here and you're not. Go up in the room. He goes up there, right? And you, were, you, you didn't investigate. You did the show there. So you know it's not one second from that room no, down right. there. You kind of got to tell them it's two stairs or two flights, right? So he's up there. He's like, no, no, I'm not. I'm not. And he co comes running down, right? 
we're looking up at the window and we saw the curtains frickin' go up. The second the curtains go up, he walks out those door, like within like one second. Right. And nobody else is there. And I go, did you guys see that curtain? Did you see the curtain? And they go, we saw the curtain. And it just raised up like you were grabbing it from underneath mm -hmm. and pulled it up. And no one was in that frickin' place. Well, you know, we don't say that there's no paranormal activity there. We experience right. paranormal activity there. It's just that when you add all of these inaccurate tales to try and explain right. the activity, that's when things go wrong. And uh, there is genuine activity at the building. Mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're comfortable saying that. So out of all the shows you did for A&E and stuff and, and on your own, what was the best experience you had? What do you think, Austin? Well, you think, Austin? I, I think everybody's a little bit different. We all had our own personal experiences at each investigation, some more than others, and some had more um, ultimate, I guess you could say, um, decision-making power of what people felt that they had mm -hmm. experienced that day. Um, for me, it's, it's Casa Madrid all day. Is I mean, it? yeah, I mean, it's... Really? Yeah, that was, that, uh, yeah, <laughs> that was, that was a good one for me. That was... Uh, now, what happened there? I saw the show. Whether, whether on the show... They, did they show, <clears throat> did they show what you're talking about on the show? Because everything's on the cutting room floor when on TV mm -hmm. for the most part. There, there was a lot of stuff that uh, was cut out of that episode. That episode was an hour long. That was a premiere yeah, episode, premier episode. Or 44 yeah. minutes, you know, right. with the, with the commercials and sponsors. But, um, there was so many things that were involved in that episode that weren't shown, um, it's almost like you have was, to have a, like a little You have to have an eight-hour TV show oh, right, to that, show everything. That investigation, for me personally, that investigation is not only the best investigation and most um, uh, impressive uh, evidence-gathering investigation for me personally, okay. um, whether it was on the show or off the show, it didn't matter. I mean, all together, all the investigations that we've ever done, that is, Casa Madrid is the the well, one that I hold. You found that, you know, I mean, we had a, a locked door open and closed with our seal broken, our tape mm -hmm. seal. That we, well, oh, yeah, I, I remember. I they did just show that, though. They, they did oh, show yeah. That, yeah, because I remember that. And we had some very good EVPs, and I know, you know, our guy Tom Froelich, mm -hmm. you know, he had a horrible sense every time he walked around down there, you know, mm -hmm. whatever it was, laying cable and, and just being down there alone. Right. He, you felt know, he always felt something right on him. Right. But when you have feelings, you can't record feelings. No, no, so, no. So, you know, right. but, uh, the, that was at your mine the favorite place. Or? I, I, I really enjoyed that place. It, it was very intriguing. The history, the nooks and crannies. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, was that I, place huge? It, it is I think, big. I think you told me it was eighteen thousand. It, it is big. But for me, I think even a little bit more was the uh, the women's college in Lake Forest. Oh, okay. Which was in a huge four story college, which was completely abandoned. That was that on the A and E show. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And uh, no power in this building. It's uh, you know it was about a hundred years old. And the uh, story was that a, a girl was found dead on the uh, front lawn in 1916. And again, this building has no power, completely abandoned. And we were in there. And our most we're all skeptical, but our most skeptical guy is uh, Pete Schleich, who's our forensic guy. At that point, absolute non-believer, 100 percent. Okay. So, what, but the, here's the problem, Chuck. When you're a non-believer, you never prepare yourself for what you will do or how you will feel if or when you are face to face with something because right, right, right. you don't think that day is ever coming. Hmm. So there's no plan, you understand? Mm -hmm. Well, Pete was on the third floor laying some cable or something and uh, he came walking out, he was alone, and uh, it was brought to our attention you know, that Pete had a little disturbing uh, encounter and <laughs> Pete was as white as a bottle of milk. Yeah, yeah. And he told us that he saw a figure poke out and look at him from around a corner down a long, long hallway. And, you know, after that moment, you know, it kind of really unnerved him. Uh, he had filmed, because he's, he's the guy that's always got the thermal camera. Okay. And he had filmed a cold spot down there. And Pete and Tom partner up a lot. And they both walked down there and could not find a, any kind of source for this cold spot. And I think it was like the day later where we met with the historian who gave me a picture of four guys standing in the woods. There's a little forest area on the mm -hmm. property. And I showed it to Pete. And there's four men. And he picked out one of them. He goes, who's this guy? And he says, well, actually, that's the homicide suspect from 1916, standing wow. in the woods with his three attorneys. Because he says, that's the guy I saw. No kidding. So, to Do this, you believe her now? Well, you know what? He, well, he'll always say, just because he can't explain something, no. doesn't mean there's right. not an explanation for it. <laughs> Come on. But it kills he, me. He is not 
skeptical as you know it's been watered down because he had his own experience but of course him making a positive idea of a face was not recorded either but uh, it, it has caused him to kind of take a different stance so after your show you guys are doing events right yeah, and yeah, yeah. you guys are playing yes you guys have a group a band what do you call yeah it's a band yeah band. absolutely o open key. called open key open key yeah and absolutely. i did have the opportunity to hear you guys and you were great thank you very much Thanks. sounded great you thank really you. did thank you sounds Appreciate like you that. Do, and you got a lot of good original stuff too so all how's original. that going over it's, it's all original music we don't do any anybody else's music it's all it's all our heartfelt feelings put down in strings you know but uh yeah, it sounded great too um thank you it's all about what we know right. relationships police work and investigating the paranormal that's you know what we write about and when i heard you guys play the first time i know you told me you don't do originals and I said, so we well, only do originals. I mean, you don't do uh, covers. Covers. And I said, well, throw in a couple covers. And you, you played a couple covers. And by the way, you sounded great on them. Thanks. Right? And that's what I'm saying. You know, I, I'm, as an agent, I'm disagreeing with you. <laughs> throw in a damn cover. <laughs> if, you, if you do them that well, you know what I mean? We did that for you, Chuck. Oh, yeah. That was all for you, buddy. But see, bar owners and clubs, and when you play out, it just makes them go, oh, that sounded good. That bar sounded owners good. don't care what it sounds like as long as, as, long as you, as you draw people. the people. That's they true. don't care what you do. You can bang on a pot with a wooden spoon right. as long as people If you come. fill the place, they, they don't care. About. Right. Because I remember I tried booking a couple bands, and I don't, I don't really book bands, but I tried to book some bands that were pretty high profile. Mm -hmm. And they said, well, they draw. They didn't care about it. I told them, here's what they did. Here's what they, they were on. You know, they had six albums out. They sold this many albums. Blah, 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 blah. I might have said that to them. Blah, blah, blah. Because they said, will they bring people in the door here? Right. We don't care if Elvis comes here. If they're not drawing, or he's not drawing, it doesn't matter. It'd be cool to see him, but you know. Right, right. So it's all about business, right? Know? That's all. Because you guys have to come back and play. Absolutely, It'd be awesome, fantastic. Because you, know? you also you have a. I read on your. You mean Facebook, man? You must be on Facebook a lot. Because <laughs> I'm it's on been it a said, few John. times a day. It's been said, I, buddy. There's Ron. There's Ron. It's been said. <laughs> but. <laughs> I noticed on it. Well, this is good. I get my information from there, I guess. I, I don't know. Right. Whatever it is. I, and you, you got a keyboard guy now. We do. Uh, Colin Reed, who's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, he's a great guitarist, great keyboard player. Awesome musician all the way around. Yeah. And, so, was he uh, primarily do, does he do both keyboards and guitar? He, right now Depends he's. Depends on he, the songs you're playing? Or? Right. Right now he's doing everything. Um, not the song, everything. You'll hear that one day. But um, hmm. uh, right now he's doing everything. He's, he's doing a little bit of keyboards, a little bit of guitar, and he's also helping with the creativity side of it. You know, the. Um, the process that, and that's the hardest part, the process of actually putting all those thoughts down into uh, to a storyline. And uh, easy. putting the right music and the right melody that go along with your story. And uh, he, he's, a, he's a hell of a musician, he really yeah, is. He's fantastic. He's a great addition. So who, who, do you guys collaborate, the two of you, for the most part? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what do you do, just sit down with the guitars and just, I mean, what's, you know your, what? what's your process? If I may, a lot of times, <laughs> Austin will just be playing and, you know, there's no talking to him. He's in another world. He's in the creative world. Right. And, and that really, that's where a lot of things come from. Uh, and, and you just have to let him go and do his thing. And then, you know, it'll be, what do you think of this and what do you think of this? When he returns to Earth, usually. But uh, Which can sometimes be a couple hours. That's okay, though. He's that's usually fine. Facebooking when I'm doing there it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that's where a lot, of, a lot of things, you know, come from, just thinking outside the box. Well, you guys have to come back. We only got about a minute left. Yeah. So you have to come back and play. And if anybody wants to contact you, how do they get a hold of you? How do you think, Chuck? Facebook's the number one and easiest thing. We're all on there. Tom Froelich, Pete Schleich, Mariah Rehm, uh, Scott Ziarko, okay. and Brian Jones are our two tech guys. They sit out in the van. And Austin Weinstock and myself are all on Facebook. And the name of your group is what? Open Key. No, no the, we got the Open Key, but yeah. the Paranormal Group? Chicago Paranormal Detectives. Okay. Which you can also go on ChicagoParanormalDetectives.com. Okay. So. And then you'll answer them. Doesn't necessarily mean you're going to go to them, but you'll answer them. We will. We, you know what? I like corresponding with anybody. That, you know, I, I answer every question that, that comes in. Uh, again, you know, we don't do apartment buildings. We don't do graveyards, and we don't do anything outside of Chicagoland. And we only cool. do cases when there's an emergency or some kind of an immediate need for our services. So, hey, Ronnie. Thanks, thanks Chuck. Appreciate, Appreciate you having us. Chuck, Austin. thank you, buddy. You guys rock. All right, brother. All right, thanks.